Hey, this video is about the workflow of inserting custom music into Banjo-Kazooie ROM hacks. I won't be explaining how to write MIDI, nor will I be teaching you how to write music in general because you can find lots of resources elsewhere for that. Um, I may make another video on this topic if enough people would like to would like a breakdown of how to write music in the style of Banjo-Kazooie, although I'm not a master at it. A brief overview of music in Banjo-Kazooie. Um, it uses MIDI to trigger a synth that has different instruments. So the MIDI itself contains no actual sound. It's just data that tells a synth which notes to play, uh, how loud to play them. Uh, you can write your own MIDI to create your own songs, or you can download existing MIDI files of songs that you would like to use in Banjo-Kazooie. To insert our own music into Banjo-Kazooie, you'll need a few things. The first thing you'll need is a Banjo-Kazooie ROM of the game. Um, you'll have to find this yourself. I'm not going to link to that. The next thing you'll need is a Banjo's backpack software. Uh, I have a link to that. I have a link to everything in here that I'm going to mention. Um, you'll also need Project 64 to play the game to test your audio. And the last one is Sakaiju. You will need Sakaiju to set up the MIDI properly for it to play the right instruments in Banjo-Kazooie. A few softwares I would recommend if you want to write your own music is Reaper. Another one is LMMS um, or MuseScore. Uh, LMMS and MuseScore are a lot easier to learn. Reaper is a little bit more difficult, but I think Reaper is the best option. They're all free. Reaper has a free trial that never actually ends. It says you have a month or two, but it'll never end, so you can use that um, forever. I would not recommend FL Studio for a beginner. To write your own music, it's easier if you can hear the correct Banjo-Kazooie instrument sounds. You'll need the Banjo-Kazooie sound font in which you can find a download link to from this Reddit post in the description. You'll also need a VST sampler to load the sound font into. I find that Sforzando works well enough for our needs. You'll find the link to this in the description. If you go to the downloads, actually I'll link this downloads page. If you go down to the bottom, somewhere down here, the second last one's Sforzando, you've got the downloads here. Now after you've installed Reaper and Sforzando, um, you'll open up Reaper, you want to add a track, Control T, or you can right click, um, click on this effects box, and we'll add, we'll add uh, Sforzando. Here it is. Now you're going to load in the Banjo-Kazooie sound font by clicking import, and let me just find it here. Here we go. So you've got access to all of the instruments here. Um, this is not actually the instruments, uh, <laughs> sorry. I believe that it'll be, it'll be called Banjo-Kazooie underscore SF underscore SF2. These are just a bunch of other instruments. And you have all of the instruments here. So let's go ahead and choose something random. Clarinet. I'm going to go ahead and call the track name clarinet so that when we export this, this track will be called clarinet and we'll be able to recognize what instrument it, it should be playing. So now I'll set my tempo down here, 130, um, that's fine. And we'll add in a MIDI clip onto this track by holding down control and left click and dragging. Double click on the MIDI clip to open up its contents in the MIDI window. And now you can start drawing in notes. It's got the grid is down on the bottom left here. track. I'm going to duplicate this one. Choose a different instrument. I'm going to call this one trumpet. Mm -hmm. 
some of these are out of tune it seems so um, if that's the case Damn, that sounds really bad, huh? Where is it? Tune, here it is. Cool. So now they're about the same. Cool, all right. This will be an intro, all right? We're going to use this as we're going to use this as an example of how we don't want it to loop back to this point. Um, we want it to loop, let's say, in this region here. So when it gets to the end, we don't want it to loop back to the start. And I'll show you how to do that later. But for the purpose of that tutorial, um, to explain that, I'm, I'm going to add this thing in here. So while you're writing, it's really important that you keep these faders at zero. You want to be changing the volume of these notes by using this velocity down here. Make sure that this does say velocity. But if, you, if it's on the wrong thing, you'll come to here and you'll go to velocity. It's the top one. Um, you don't want to be changing these because when we export this MIDI, it's not going to contain the information of what these tracks values have. This is for the audio, but the MIDI itself doesn't have any audio. That's what we're exporting. Another thing to note is that um, uh, you'll have to add a note. It, there'll have to be a note that goes to the end of this MIDI clip. Let's say I want this to be the song, right, from here to here. If for whatever reason there was no note, like this was like this or something, it would cut off because there's no note at the end here this last section here would be cut off and um, basically you'd have in, in Banjo-Kazooie it would be looping sorry let me just delete these it would basically be ending here and you'd be missing this last part and it would be looping you know it would just sound really bad because you'd have this sudden skip from here to wherever you've started again so you, if if that was the case um, you'd need to add in, if you'd written a song and it was like this and there was no note at the end here, you'd need to add in a note on any track and just turn this volume all the way down. And that way it won't register a sound here, but it'll know that there's a note here. And make sure that it's not like this, because this will be the end then. It'll be somewhere like, uh, like there, but you, it needs to go all the way to the end. You can start it wherever, but it just makes sure that there's a note that goes to the end. Just so happens with this piece, it's already got a note there, so I, I'm not going to worry about that. Alright, so you finished your piece and you want to export it. So, the first thing we're going to do is actually come up here and select exactly the region that you want to export from the very first note to the very end. You're going to come to File, Export Project MIDI. Um, and you're going to click time selection only. It might be like this, but you make sure that it's on time selection only. Everything else is fine. Actually, not everything else. We want to change the directory and the name of the export. Oh, well, I guess the directory is fine, but wherever you want to export it to. And you want to change the name of this and keep .mid at the end. Um, it's not really that important. You can add it in after you've exported it by changing the name of it and just adding in .mid, but if you do it here, then you won't have to do that. Cool, so it's exported. And it's here. I have some other ones, which we don't need now. So if you want pre-made MIDI files that other people have made or have been extracted from other games, you can find them online. Um, you know, if you don't want to write your own music. Uh, this is some websites here. Um, personally, I recommend recreating them from scratch, not these websites, not the MIDI. Uh, uh, this is because a lot of the MIDI files I find online are made by amateurs. They're is usually a number of incorrect notes or missing notes 
However, if you're not familiar with writing music, then this is a good option. So once you've got your MIDI file, whether you've written it or whether it's from online, you're going to open up Sakaiju. And we're going to open up that MIDI file. Um, this is the default that comes with Sakaiju. We can close that. We don't need that. So we'll open up our MIDI. Before we get going with the rest of this in Sakaiju, um, there's just some reminders that Pandra Kazooie only supports a maximum of 16 tracks in total, so if you've got 17 tracks, you will have to remove one. Um, Pandra Kazooie levels have certain tracks only played in certain areas. This means that if you're standing in the starting area of a level, you may not be able to hear all of the tracks playing. Some of them are locked to playing underwater, while others are allocated to specific localized areas within a room instance. Um, so, for example, I've got a link to this in the description. This shows what areas in certain levels play which tracks. Um, so, Mumbo's Mountain, the main area has tracks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 playing, and 13. But if you've got something on track 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12, 14, 15, or 16, it's you will not hear it. You'll have to move around to other areas. All right, so for this tutorial, I'm just going to make this font a lot bigger. Cool. Now we can't read anything, that's fine. <laughs> input channel. Uh, we want the output channel. The program number. Volume. Pan. Reverb. Chorus. And delay. These are the things that we want to be looking at. We don't need anything else here. So, in Kaiju, we're going to set the instrument, volume, panning, and effects such as reverb and chorus for each track. Um, the Sakaiju program instrument names aren't the same as the Banjo-Kazooie instrument names. So, you could ignore the playback of the sounds in Sakaiju and also the names of them on here. This is the program number here. This is what controls the instrument. Um, cause the, and if you play it back in Sakaiju, they'll sound like the wrong instrument. They'll sound like the instrument that it says in Sakaiju, but in Banjo-Kazooie, it will play the right instrument. Um, and so how do we know what number? We could open up Repo and look at this again, or if you've got a track from online, um, you'll be able to reference this image, which I've put in the description. So here's the here, here it is, here's the image. It shows you all of the instruments, their name, and their number. We're concerned with the number. That's what we're going to be plugging into the program number field. So let's let's do that. So we've got a clarinet. So we can look in this and we can find clarinet is number seven. Plug in seven. Is my uh, my num lock is off. So it says clavinet, and it's probably going to sound like a clavinet too. So trumpet's next. Look for trumpet. I think that was 18. Trumpet's 18. Uh, was it a trombone? I think it's a trombone. 17. So just to push that point again. Right, doesn't sound anything like what it will in Banjo Kazooie. The next thing we're going to do is to make sure that these tracks, they all have their own input and output. So right now they're all on one. We we just want to change this. So it's they all have their own, right? You don't want any two tracks using the same number. Um, these numbers here, these are the numbers 
that are correlating to, not to this, to, where are we? To these here, right? So with that example before, one, two, three, four, five, six, and 13 are playing. So if we had this on track seven, we wouldn't be able to hear it because it simply doesn't play or it doesn't play in the main area maybe it would play in other areas around the map I'm not sure if this is referencing the different areas around the main area or if this was referencing areas within Mumbo's Mountain that have their own rooms such as like Ticker's Tower I, I don't know maybe the next part is the volume the pan the reverb the chorus the delay um these these have dashes right now. Okay, and I I don't know what is the default value for Benji Kazooie. Um I I leave these as dashes. I have the best results when I've left these as dashes and it just seems to reference the MIDI volume of of the notes in here and it works fine. Um but if you do happen to want to change these, uh zero is the minimum, one hundred and twenty seven is the maximum volume. For pan 64 is center, 0 is left, 127 is right, you know, and you've got every number in between 0 and 127. Uh, reverb is the same as volume, 0 or blank like this is no reverb, 127 is maximum, like the most amount of reverb, um, same for the chorus. Uh, one thing to note is that um, the effects reverb and chorus and delay oh sorry it's the same for the delay as well for reverb chorus delay the effects these three effects seem to have some effect on the actual volume as well so you'll need to play with that you'll need to play around with um how much of it and increasing or decreasing the volume in here saving this going to banjo's backpack importing it opening it up in project 64 and checking so now we're done, we can save this. Right, um, I like to call it underscore SEK. I already have one, I just checked it. Um, so that's that. If you have a pop up saying something, something or other, change this or that channel thing, just click OK. It should be fine. Um, it's not something to worry about. And now we're ready to import it into Banjo's backpack. So now we're in Banjo's backpack. This is where you'll open up the ROM. Um, so once you've opened up the ROM, you're going to go to Tools, MIDI Tool. You're going to choose which area you want to import the music for. Um, choose whether you want it to loop. And the loop point. So what is this? Um, this basically offsets the song by an amount. So if we wanted to uh, loop from between this region here, um, but we don't want it to loop back to here once it gets to the end, right? We want it to loop and start here. This is an intro essentially. Then we'll use this loop point. Uh, for example, it would sound something like this. Right, as opposed to... Um, we're going to use 900, a value of 960 per quarter note. So what is a quarter note? Um, you won't have these in your Reaper. These are custom. That's okay. That's not the point. We, you don't need this. A, a quarter note is basically that much. But what is that? Um, we're in a, we're in four four time signature. That means that in in a single bar, which is from five. Let me move this thing out the way. You see five to six. It's probably quite small on the screen, but um, from bar 5 to bar 6 that means there's 4 quarter notes which means that this much is two qu this 1 quarter note 2, 3, 4 quarter notes um, and each quarter note is 960 ticks um, and this takes value of ticks so I've got 1 bar so it'll be you can bring up the calculator it'll be 960 times 4 which gives us 3840 uh, if you're going to copy and paste this, make sure that you get rid of the comma or else it won't work. So now we'll choose, click import, we'll choose our MIDI. 
and it's going to say that it will be up the rom will be injected with this midi once we close this window so we have to close this it's been updated so now let's check it out in uh, project 64 we'll open up our rom we're going to make sure that this has the extended memory Uh -huh. Hopefully this will loop correctly, and it is. Cool. Perfect. Uh -huh. That's the tutorial. If you have any questions, you can write them in the comments section. Thanks for watching.